Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this tutorial for today, we will be discussing questions related to distributed loadings. So in this tutorial, we will find uh, the questions from the past exam, be it from the midterm as well as the final exam. Any question that is related to our topic, which is distributed loading for today. And we will try to discuss and solve the problems, inshallah. It hopefully will help you to be more prepared for the type of question that can come in the exams, inshallah. Alright, so uh, as usual, uh, the PDF of the questions is can be found in the link in the description box below. Feel free to download and attempt as we go through this tutorial. If you find this video to be helpful or beneficial, uh, do like the video and without further ado, first question for today. So here we can see the question on the left as usual We have the diagram and you have the question. This is from one of the previous midterm The question actually gives you 30 marks. There's two part part A and part B So part A says replace the loading acting on the beam by an equivalent resultant force and couple moment acting at point O and part B Replace the loading acting on the beam by a single resultant force. Specify where the force acts measured from point O. Alright, so if you understand the question, okay, normally the first thing that you need to make sure you understand is what the question give and what the question want you to determine, right? In this case, um, it is related to what we have covered in the past tutorial, which is um, simplification of force and couple moment system, right? So part A says you have to replace the loading um, by equivalent force and couple moment acting at point O, right? So in the end, we will have only one force and one couple moment at point O. And part B is actually further simplification, meaning that you will have in the end only one force and you have to determine where is the position, right? So um, the the so. The starting point, of course, will relate to what we will be discussing today, which is distributed loading. As you can see, um, the loading is distributed loading. It's not one single force. Um, but what we have learned so far is how to deal with single force, right? Single point force. So what we have to do first is to transform this distributed loading into single point force. And then we can do as we have done before, which is solve um, to get the equivalent system. All right. So. So the first thing is to understand how to deal with the distributed loading, right? Okay, let's take a look at the beam. So roughly the distance is 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 1 1.5, right? 1 1.5, 0 0.75, 0 0.75. That's the distance basically. So you have the loading. So I'll draw the loading in the different color here. So something like this. Right, so um, we hopefully you have covered the lecture, right? So normally the assumption is you already covered the lecture and this is just the tutorial. So we'll go straight into how we deal with this. So basically you can divide into the common shape, right? So this is a triangle, this is a rectangular, and this is another triangle, right? So by this, we can have three different forces, right? For each of the shape. So first this shape, um, you will have force here where it will be have the ratio of one third and two third meaning that the distance here is 0 0.25 hopefully you can see the number um, and then for this triangle here you have force here so because this is 1.5 so this will be 0 0.5 there and then here is basically the total length is uh, 2.25 right this whole length so you have somewhat something like this where the distance is we have 2.25 meaning 1.125 right 2.25 right so that will be the position right so um, for the position it should be in the lecture I have actually shown and derived how we can actually get this position um, as well as if you just want to memorize what is the concept, right? So hopefully you have done uh, watching the lecture first. So in terms of the value, um, so for triangle is just the area of the triangle, so half times. Okay, before that, I forgot to note that um, this one is 
this height is 4 kN per meter right and this height is another 4 kN per meter right making the total 8 kN meter there kN per meter there right so in terms of the area so this is half times this height is 4 kN per meter and then this one is 0 0.75 that will be the, the force um, here is a rectangle so it's simply just um, this height which is 4 times the length which is 2.25 and then this one is another triangle so half times the height is 4 and then the length is uh, where's the length here 1.5 right 1.5 Okay, so hopefully it's clear what I'm writing. Uh, I'm not sure whether when you zoom, it is is it clear all of this? Hopefully it is, because I'm not sure when 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 it is processing is it too small. Hopefully it's not. Okay, so this is the first thing that you have to be able to do, right? So that from here, basically it is transform the force into three point four, right? So one is here. One is here, and another one is here. And if you calculate this one, it will become three, right? Three kilonewton. Is it correct? And then this one, where is it? Four times. This is nine kilonewton. And then this one is, oops, is it one point five? Yeah, one point five kilonewton, right? So that is the value. In terms of the distance, so I'll take note of this one. So this is length is 0 0.5. Uh, this length is 1.125. And this length is, if you add this, 2.25 becomes 2.5 meter, right? Now, it is not compulsory to draw the distance as such, but... I find it to be very helpful to avoid mistake later on because every distance is measured from the end. So when you want to calculate moment, because the question already states um, it is at point O, so you will be taking moment about point O. So what you need is distance from point O. If you just state distance like this, etc., sometimes if you make a mistake in terms of you forgot to add all the distance, that's a bad way to lose marks, right? So might as well just have a discipline to draw like this to minimize uh, error as, as, as much as possible. All right, so from here, what we need is uh, resultant force and resultant couple moment, right? So in terms of resultant force, so after you have got done this one, this means that the diagram is already in the format that we have covered before, right? So from the original di diagram over there, you have transformed here. Now you have this one, you can just sit with calculate as usual, right? So for um, FR, Oops. If I take it downward, right? So it should be the summation of forces. So all of downward. So 3 plus 9 plus 1.5. So is it 13.5? Yep. Kilo Newton, right? So that's the resultant force. What about the moment? So moment resultant at point O. This is point O, right? So we'll take, because everything is clockwise, so we'll take clockwise as positive. So it's just summation of moment or summation of force times distance, right? So in this case, three times the distance. So, oops, three times 0 0.5 plus nine times 1.125 plus 1.5 time distance of 2.5 and then if you add this you get 15.375 kilo newton meter clockwise okay so that's how you solve for part a right so it is basically as such um, the only new thing that we have covered today is this from here to here, right? So as you can see, this is the first step from the distributed loading 
to get the single point loading right so if you make a mistake here even if you understand what you have covered in terms of equivalent force and couple moment system um, but if the input is wrong here then obviously it will affect your calculation right so make sure the initial stage is 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 not having any error right so make sure okay and then part b replace the loading acting by a single for resultant force specify where it uh, the location right so basically from here we want to transform into just one single force which is fr but we need to find what is the distance here right this is not known right so from the understanding that we have before this moment produced by this f r which is we already know the value here right 13.5 kN what is the distance uh, the concept is the moment produced here should be equal to the moment produced here right so basically um, f r which is okay f r times d should equal to m r or 13.5 times d equal to 15.375 so d should be 15.375 divided by 13.5 you will get 1.139 meter so that is for part b right so it's not difficult um and the uh, distributed loading is just part of the question actually and normally it is related to other chapters right so yeah so that is question number one of um, today's slide uh, hopefully everything is clear uh, we will move on to the next question inshallah now if you see the slide or if you see the pdf that have the question paper you might see this slide here it says it is only the beginning um some of you might ask what has this slide have anything to do with uh, this tutorial right so um basically i just want to highlight that um number one actually uh, all the questions that will come after this in the slide or in the uh, tutorial video here is um having uh the component of distributed loading however uh, that is only the beginning of the question and the question is much much longer after that right so it will combine with chapter 5 or chapter 6 onwards right so um, distributed, distributed loading uh, tend to be only the beginning of the question um, so it is not the complete question especially if you see the question in the final exam right so normally um, this part will be embedded in chapter 5 question or chapter 6 question onwards right so my point is this so even if you understand chapter 5 if you understand chapter 6 but when you the question actually start with a distributed loading uh, if you make a mistake there you either you don't understand or um, you make a mistake you make an error so that will affect the whole calculation and your final answer will be wrong right so make sure the beginning of the question um, sometimes it is distributed loading you really nail it down to get a correct answer right so that is how important um, some of the chapter early chapter including chapter 4 is right it is the beginning of the question all right so um that's just for this slide uh, it's just to highlight that this portion is normally only the beginning of the question right it's not the whole question okay moving on to question number two all right this question is from one of the final exam um here we have the diagram there and then as you can see you have the distributed loading and the question say determine the reaction at the support a and b for equilibrium of the beam shown so um, this question is already about equilibrium which we haven't covered yet uh, equilibrium of rigid bodies we haven't covered it yet um, however at the beginning of the question you have to deal with the distributed loading first right so hence for the purpose of this tutorial we'll just concentrate on the distributed loading and of course the remaining we haven't covered yet so that is for another tutorial when we come to that chapter later on inshallah all right so straight to the to the diagram right so basically here um you have something like this right it's double okay anyway 
right so you have basically four meter here and then three meter here right and then you have 100 newton per meter 100 newton per meter all right so um how to deal with this of course i already divided the area so straight away this is a triangle so it will be here and the distance in terms of the distance it should be one third of this which means this is one meter right and in this case the whole thing is seven so it should be here where this is basically 3.5 meter half of seven the rectangle right so in terms of the value this one is half times the height which is 100 times the base which is 3 right um, which means it is 150 uh, Newton right this one is just the height which is 100 times the base which is 7 meaning it is 700 Newton right so um, if you redraw it because normally that's how you do it you redraw so that you can proceed with the remaining part of the question right so you will have uh, two forces one in here one here this one is 150 oops this one is 150 newton this one is 700 newton and if i just draw the distance from here this will be uh, 3.5 meter and this will be 6 meter where the remaining is 1 meter right so that's the distributed loading part hopefully it's clear and after this is dealing the with the uh, because there are other forces as well from the support which we haven't covered yet so i'm going to stop there that's the only part that we have to learn for this tutorial right so it is only the beginning of the question there will be remaining but if you make a mistake here whatever comes after that will also be a mistake so make sure you really understand this before we start to learn chapter 5 chapter 6 onward right okay moving on to the next question now this question uh hopefully you can see it is quite small because it's quite long um, this is from one of the final exam one of the previous final exam you have a 3d um, structure on the left there uh, and then you have the distributed loading there and then you have all the other cables etc but our focus for today is the distributed loading right so uh, as you can see uh, if you go through the question there are part a draw the free body diagram and then part b express the forces part c determine the component of reactions part d etc right so the question is longer but where is this part that we are covering which is um distributed loading it is actually part of the thing that you have to understand and apply when you want to draw the free body diagram because when you draw the free body diagram it should be already in term of a uh, single point load right so in this case if you see on the end of the pipe there is something like this right and then going there right something like that right so the distributed loading is here right so basically if i draw the distributed loading is somewhere there and what we need to do is because this is downward where the value is 800 newton per meter and the length is 3 meter Right. So basically what you need to be able to do is how to replace this with one single uh, point load force right? So basically uh, the location is obviously because this is 3 meter So this will be 1.5 meter 1.5 meter And the force the value is just the area of the rectangular Which means it is 800 If you want to put your unit it's, it's newton per meter Times 3 meter hence you can get uh, in terms of the Newton, right? 2400 Newton, right? Um, that's just one of the step in the longer step of the calculation, right? Um, so yeah, that's the position of uh, distributed loading. It's just one step of a long calculation. But this first step, this one step, if you make a mistake here, 
the rest will be affected, right? So that's how important the first step is. Moving on to the next question. Okay, in this question, you have the diagram there. Uh, in this case, you have three forces going down and then you have the um, distributed loading going up actually. Um, was the value of W1 and W2. If you go to the question, if the soil exerts a trapezoidal distribution of load on the bottom of the footing, determine the intensities W1 and W2 of this di distribution needed to support the column loading shown in the figure. Alright, so basically in this question, um, the flow is the opposite way where you have to actually determine what is W1 and what is W2 instead of having this value and then calculate onwards, right? Uh, but in terms of the step, it is the same because you have to draw the free body diagram meaning that you have to transform those distributed loading into single point loading, right? So, we will focus on the distributed, distributed load, right? So, basically, you have down here something like this. So, obviously, you can divide into this uh, shape, right? A rectangular and a triangle. And we know this is W2. And what will this be? What will this be? This should be W1 minus W2, right? Because W1 is the whole thing. Right? W1 is the whole thing. So this is W2. So this, the, this, this remaining here for the triangle is this minus that one. W1 minus W2. Alright, so in terms of the force, for this rectangular, it should be at the middle there. That's straightforward, right? Um, so in terms of this distance, what, what do you have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the whole thing is 8 meter. That's interesting. Okay, this is 8 meter. Meaning that this should be 4 meter. Half of it, right? What about this triangle? So it should be 1 third here. So meaning this is one third meaning what? Eight over three meter, right? What are the value? The value of this one is just the the rectangle. So is W two times eight. What is one half times? You have W one minus W two, and then you have eight, right? Or if you simplify this, this will come eight W two. This one will become 4, w, 4 W1 minus W2, right? So if you simplify this into a new diagram, so basically if you focus on, okay, you have those um, 80 kilonewton there and then 60 kilonewton there and then 50 kilonewton there, right? So uh, with the distance given, so basically you also have um, this value here so this will be two point something right so it's somewhere here this is what is this so this become four w1 minus w2 and then you have another force here at the middle uh is that a middle three point five okay not the middle so it's so my 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 scale is a bit off but this is w2 right uh, with the respective distances from the, the question and what you have determined here, right? So from here, you will continue on to solve the question. Um, but for this, for this tutorial, we end here where we already have this transform into this two force, right? So hopefully you, you, are clear, you understand what is going on here. We just want to go one step in solving the distributed loading to become single point force. And that is important because from here, we will continue on the calculation. Right. If this is a mistake, the whole thing, the rest of it is, will also make, become a mistake. Alright, so that's this question. We will move on to the next question. Okay, this is question number 5 for today. Um, you have the diagram there and you have all the distributed loadings there. And then the question state, um, the compound beam in figure 3 is fixed, supported at A and supported by rockers at B and C. If there are hinges or pins at D and E, determine the reactions in, at the support A, B and C. Draw all the necessary free body diagram. Of course, um, this is from a chapter that we haven't covered yet. However, uh, what is our interest here is the distributed loading, right? Because first you have to settle that 
to become the point force um, and then we can proceed further in that chapter right so right so um, I will not be bothered about the pins the rockers etc yet because we haven't covered that yet so I'll just going to be drawing as if it's a one long beam like that right even though it's not uh, when we cover that that chapter after this we will draw properly but this we are still focusing on the distributed loading right so you have one distributed loading there and then something there and then something there right so basically you have three basic shapes there um, the distance here is two meter the distance here is six meter and this thing here is 9 meter right 2, 4 and 2, 6 3 and 6, 9 alright so from here ok you, you, the height you have this one is 6 uh, this one is 8 and this one is 8 also right ok so from here you have for each shape of course for each shape of course you have one load so here you have at the middle here so meaning that this is one meter and here it should be at the middle as well so this one is um, three meter and this one it should be one third here so this one should be another three meter one third of nine in terms of the value this one so it's just a uh, rectangular here six and two right so six times two this is in terms of kilonewton right so it becomes 12 kilonewton this one the value is just uh, rectangular as well 8 times 6 so 8 times 6 right so become 48 kilonewton and then this one is half oops half times this height which is 8 times this base is 9 so 36 kilonewton right so basically if you redraw this whole thing obviously i'm just focusing on the force not on the beam here because it's not really a beam there's three separate beam there right but regardless so you'll have uh, 12 kilonewton here um 48 kilonewton here and 36 kilonewton here with all the specified specified uh, distances yeah that's about it in terms of uh, the portion that we are covering today which is the distributed loading right uh, by now, if you see, you think, wait a minute, all of this is short question, right? Uh, hopefully, you, you, you understand the context. The, the question is not short. The question is much longer than this. This is only first step of the question, right? So, if you look at the question in the exam that you have in the PDF, um, we are not answering it yet. We're just doing the first step, which is dealing with the distributed loading, right? Um, the next steps onwards is from a chapter that we haven't covered yet. So if you think, ah, oh, this is all short, of course, it's just the first step, right? The, the first step in the long multiple steps of the question. All right, so moving on to the last question of this tutorial. Okay, this is um, question six for today. Um, you have the diagram there. Uh, of course, you have the distributed loading, hence why we are interested in this question. This is from one of the final exam, the previous final exam. Um, so refer to the structure shown in the figure draw the free body diagram of all four members in the frame shown in the figure considering the four free body diagram drawn in part a how many unknowns are there in total can the support reaction at a and b be determined explain the reason for your answer okay so we have multiple things there however um, to this point what we have covered here until this point is just the first step which is dealing with the distributed loading right so we will just focus on that so throughout the whole thing here obviously again this is i'm simplifying because it's not when we have covered chapter four five onwards you will you know five six onwards you know it should be shouldn't be drawn like this but i'm just focusing on the free on the distributed loading so we'll just draw it as such right so um the length here is six meter the length here is also six meter right so the height here is 900 newton per meter 
so from here you can divide into this one is just one triangle this one you can divide into two triangle right so in term of the force for this one is here so this will be one third so this should be two meter here right and this remaining is four meter this one each of this is three meter so here you have two meter here here you have one meter here right Right, so it's close to the higher side right so in term of the value this one is just half times the height which is 900 newton per meter times six meter right you can count you can calculate that one so i'll take the right here first of course this will be the same so this one is half times the height is 900 the base is three right this is the same half times 900 times three right so in the end when you redraw the diagram so you have these three forces with the respective values there and respective position right so um what we have covered today is quite straightforward and quite um i'm not sure what is the the total length of this video but generally speaking because we have covered we have covered six questions these are from the exam question that i have in store from many semesters before um, these are the six question where I can find distributed loading is in the question right so it is quite common generally speaking and it's normally um, part of the question it's normally first step of the question as you can see here and before right so make sure you really understand how to deal with distributed loading and make sure you get it correct because when the first step is wrong the rest will be wrong in terms of the numbers and the answer right so make sure you do not lose marks like that so um, with that uh, that's the end of the tutorial for today um, I think it's quite easy and straightforward if you understand um, if you don't if you have any question uh, do not hesitate please ask in the um, to the lecturer in whatever medium or including if you can ask also in the comment uh, section below uh, with that, I think we end the session. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka. Tu bilak. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And we will see you in the next tutorial, insha Allah.